Hello, today I'm going to walk you through how to use an HTTP API or HTTP request from a FusionAuth Lambda. So here I've logged into the dashboard of my FusionAuth instance. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have a valid license. This feature is only available to FusionAuth instances with a valid license. So the way I do that is I go to the reactor page. I can see that it says I'm licensed. If you're not licensed, please go to the Fusion Health pricing page for more information. The next thing we need to do is set up the Lambda. So I'm creating a new Lambda. I'm going to make the type JWT populate, and that will run every time a user logs in, and it will get the user information and be able to mutate the JSON web token that is being created. The next step is to make sure that I'm choosing the Graal JS engine rather than the Nashorn engine, and that is new with FusionAuth 1.35. Previously, you just had access to the Nashorn engine, but Graal.js is in technology preview and is going to be the engine we're using in the future. Nashorn is being deprecated by the Java community. The next thing to do is turn on debug. This is not required, but it's gonna be helpful to us. And then we need to actually have the code of the Lambda. Now we need to paste in the Lambda code. So let's look at this Lambda code real quick. So the first thing on line three, we see the actual fetch call, which is similar in the API, but not completely API compatible with the fetch that you might find in a browser or in a node environment. But it does take the URL and it takes a method and it takes headers. So the URL that we're gonna fetch is just a random Marvel movie quote and we're using the get method, but we do support other methods like post or patch or delete. So you can use this with the REST API. And then lines five to seven, we actually have uh, an array of headers. In this case, we're just passing in the content type, but you could pass in a, an authorization header or an X dash fusion auth dash tenant ID header or any other header that you want to pass in. Then we get back to the response, and the response is, again, similar to the fetch response from the browser or the node, but not exactly the same, but it does let you look at the status and give you the body, and it also gives you back the headers if you want the response headers. So in this case, on line nine, we are checking to see if we have a successful response, and then if we do, we're parsing the response body as JSON, and then there you can see we're, we're adding a quote claim which is going to be the random quote. If the API is down, we don't want to have that claim missing, so we're gonna set the claim to a sane default. So that is the Lambda that we're adding. And you can pull from more than one API. You can do JavaScript business logic on the API results if you want. It's really pretty flexible. One thing to note that as of the time I'm recording, you have a two second timeout for the API. The next thing we're going to do is assign this to an application. So we go to the JWT tab, and then we make sure the JWT functionality is enabled. We scroll down and we're going to make this the access token populate lambda. So this means this will be run every time someone generates an access token. That is pretty much all that needs to happen. So now let's go ahead and look at the login process and verify that this API is being called.
So the JWT Populate Lambda is called during the normal authorization code grant, but it's also called during the login API request. And that is a simpler thing to display. So here's a script that calls it. So if I go ahead and just run this, you can see it took a little bit of time. If we go up here, we see our token is right here. And then I happen to know that we can take the payload of the token, which is right to here. And we can copy that. You can see that we have our quote, which is NA. Let's go ahead and run that again. It might have been a timeout issue. That returned a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and base64 decode that as well. I'm not looking for forgiveness. I'm way past asking permission. So let's go ahead and make sure that this happens repeatedly. This is not being cached. A sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. Truer words were never spoken. So here we've seen how easy it is to have a Lambda make an HTTP request. The HTTP request that we happen to make was for a JSON-based API, but it could have been for anything. And then we can take that response and transform it and populate an element, a claim of our JOT. This gets executed every single time the login process happens. Hopefully this is proven useful. I think it's going to really open up some flexibility in terms of how you design your authentication system. And especially because you can now delegate some aspects of the authentication that claims decision to systems outside of FusionAuth. If you have two or three APIs that need to be called to determine the particular claims that should be placed into a JOT, either into an access token or an ID token, you can now do so very quickly and very easily within FusionAuth. Thank you.